Hey, you remember back in 2017 when uh, John Brennan, remember John John Brennan, the uh, then CIA director, said that uh, we don't do evidence. Remember when it, when he was in Congress? I mentioned it in a in a previous video where the guy, the CIA guy, came was in Congress, and Trey Gowdy was pounding him, and the guy and the CIA director said, "Oh, we don't do evidence." So I found the clip. All right, so. This is, this, see, I did a video on uh, moveon.org, and moveon.org wants to yell, yell and scream that we're in a constitutional crisis and that, you know, Trump is going to destroy the world and, and, and all this stuff, right? But the constitutional crisis is when the flow of money influences the political decisions and that evidence, overwhelming evidence to the contrary is ignored, right? And he says it in his own words. So let's look at Trey Gowdy. You get this is old news. It's not news, but you may uh, you get, you're going to enjoy this. Watch Trey Gowdy grill John Brennan uh, for a few minutes, and then I'll I'll come back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Director. Thank you for your service to our country. Let's go back to where we were a couple of minutes ago. You mentioned or you testified that you had a conversation in August of 2016 with your Russian counterpart. You testified that you briefed uh, at least eight members of Congress throughout uh, the pendency of your investigation when you learned of Russian efforts. And we'll get to that in a minute because I, my understanding from your unclassed report is Russia has historically attempted to interfere with our electoral process. And um, they did so without coordination, collusion, or conspiring with any of the candidates. So they have a history of doing it. We'll, we'll lay that aside for a minute. 2016 electoral process. When you learned of Russian efforts, did you have evidence of a connection between the Trump campaign and Russian state actors? As I said, Mr. Gowdy, I don't do evidence. Uh, well, I, and we were uncovering information and intelligence about uh, interactions and contacts between U.S. persons and the Russians. And as we came upon that, we would share it with the Bureau. I appreciate that you don't do evidence, Director Brennan. Um, that's what I do. That's the word we use. You use the word assessment. You use the word tradecraft. I use the word evidence. Um, and the good news for me is lots of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle use the word evidence, too. Um, one of my colleagues said there is more than circumstantial evidence of collusion between the Russians and the Trump campaign. Now, uh, there are only two types of evidence. There's circumstantial and direct. So if it's more than circumstantial, by necessity, it has to be direct. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of one of my colleagues on the other side of this very committee. Another Democrat colleague on the other side of this committee also used the word evidence, that he has seen evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. And yet a third California Democrat said she had seen no evidence of collusion. So that's three different members of Congress from the same state using the same word, which is evidence. And that's the word that my fellow citizens understand, evidence. Assessment is, is your vernacular. Tradecraft is your vernacular. You and I both know what the word evidence means. And we're not getting into whether or not you corroborated, contradicted, examined, cross-examined. We're not getting into how you tested and probed the reliability of that evidence. It's a really simple question. Did evidence exist of collusion, coordination, conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russian state actors at the time you learned of 2016 efforts? So that's pretty powerful, right? Trey Gowdy, good, uh, the good, con uh, good senator right there, congressman, whatever he is, right? Grilling the shit out of John, John Brandon. So who is this guy, John Brandon, and why does he, why does he matter? Hal, let's try to find. Let's try to let's try to follow the follow the money trail and we'll figure out who he is. So John Brannon was director of the Central Intelligence Agency (CIA) from 2013 to January 2017. He served as chief counter counterterrorism advisor to U.S. President Barack Obama. His title was Deputy National Security Advisor for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism and Assistance to the President. <laughs> that title, that has about 17 words in the title. His responsibilities include overseeing plans to protect the country from terrorism and respond to national disasters. And here's the big one. 
and he met with the president daily. All right, so now you know who John Brannon is, right? John Brannon, director of the CIA during the tail portion of Obama's uh, uh, Obama's uh, second term, right? And what he did was they Obama. See, it all leads back. It leads up to Obama, right? He's this guy is responding directly to Obama. He's meeting with Obama, and there's no. But the, the critical part of it is that 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 they've thrown evidence to the wind, right? Like <clears throat> now, it's not about. It's no longer about evidence, like actual facts. What what is evidence? Wait, let's let's look up evidence. Let's see, what does evidence mean? Remember evidence? Evidence. Trey Gowdy said it. He said that there's <clears throat> direct evidence and then there's indirect evidence or circumstantial evidence, right? Now, circumstantial evidence doesn't mean that there's no evidence to support an idea, truth or a false, right? Uh, f truth or a false. Something is true or false. Circumstantial evidence, when compounded, like if there's five or six or seven different pieces of circumstantial evidence that would lead a reasonable person to believe that something is true or false, that is, in, in fact, evidence, right? Now, direct evidence is, for example, you know, the direct evidence we saw in the, in the, uh, in the rigging of the 2016 election where, you know, the exit polls don't match. That's evidence. That's direct evidence, right? There's, you know, all the, the, the Podesta emails where you saw that there was very, very specific evidence to suggest that, that, that in their own words, that they were, that they had rigged the election in favor of Hillary Clinton. That's more direct evidence. Or the, 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 um, the, the, the evidence that Hillary Clinton had a, you know, server in her basement in Chappaqua, New York, and she was conducting you know, state business, right, as, a, as the Secretary of State, with a server in her, she had circumvented government email servers, right, because she was taking, she was taking the information, hiding it from the, from the, uh, hiding it from the public. She was taking the money, she was cutting deals for, for foreign nations. That's direct evidence, right? But what does evidence mean? Evidence. According to WikiLeaks, my main source of <laughs> evidence, broadly construed, is anything presented in support of, of an assertion. This support may be strong or weak. The strongest type of evidence is that which provides direct proof of the truth of an assertion. At the other extreme is evidence that is merely consistent with an assertion, but does not rule out other contradictory assertions as in circumstantial evidence. So that's pretty much what Trey Gowdy said to, said to the uh, good John uh, Brannon, right? So, so John Brannon is the, he's the director of CIA, the, the CIA, and he says he doesn't look at evidence, so evidence doesn't matter, but, but they're saying that there's evidence of Russian meddling in the 2016 election, right? MoveOn.org, this is your constitutional crisis right here. Okay? We don't have to look any further, right? Because we know that the we know that the whole system is corrupted, right? We know that it's all about the money, how money flows into politics th through the Congress, right? How these how the politicians are paid off, how that that money and that influence affects the judiciary system throughout the country, how the governors fall in line, how all of the electoral offices around the country fall in line, and you know it's a concerted effort to cheat. <laughs> they call it politics, right? Right. But there's no, you don't need evidence. See, when, once you present evidence, no, we don't do evidence. See, a CIA guy, we don't do evidence. Right? This is your constitutional crisis right here, right? Because Brannon, right, is a, is a CIA operative, right? He's, he's, he's working directly with the president of the United States, who's trying to get a, a pool. His agenda is to get Hillary Clinton elected in the, in the presidential uh, campaign. I mean, right to get her to get a continuation of the Obama administration. That's what the oligarchs want. Right? That's what he's. That's how the money is. That's what the money is telling him. The money's flowing into Congress, and the senators and all the congressmen. They all want Hillary Clinton. All the Democratic sided, you know, the 
the pay for play are all in the favor of Hillary Clinton. They don't want this Bernie Sanders jerk off. This guy's going to just going to spoil our party, right? He's going to take all the money away from us, right? So we don't have to look at evidence. We could cheat all we want, and then in the end, we got John Brennan, CIA director, who meets with the president daily to say, "Oh, we don't, we don't, we don't do evidence, right? No fuck evidence." It's like, what are you guys crazy? You guys want evidence? Fucking, we don't do evidence. Evidence. <laughs> Yo, yo, this guy said he wants to see some evidence. He wants, he says he's got evidence, right? Yo, this guy's got evidence, and, and he wants us to look at the evidence. What kind of shit is that? Man? What the fuck? You guys, let's see, show us the money. Show us the money, right? You don't have any money. You got no evidence, right? Evidence and money. Evidence and money. Yeah, we'll take the, we'll take the money. We'll take the money. Fuck the evidence. Fuck that shit. Crazy times, right? It's crazy times in America, right? With Trey Gowdy, brilliant guy. What happened to him, man? What did he take the money? <laughs> He's disappeared. He fell off the face of the earth. And I want to, I want to conclude, right? So, so the, the the bottom line, the scenario in this, the 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 finality, the 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 evidence in this scenario is that money flows into politics, right? And Obama was 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 directly involved in the in the uh the the coup of to to discredit or to not look at the actual election the actual numbers where bernie sanders was rallying people you want evidence look at the evidence the you know with youtube we have plenty of evidence we have amazing evidence that hillary clinton couldn't put a hundred people in a schoolyard in a, in a school auditorium at a at a rally right 100 people right not even. And then when you analyze that a little further, you found evidence that those people were actually paid. They were union guys. They were paid a couple, of, you know, they were paid a couple of hours extra to go and sit and have to, you know, try to pretend that they were interested in listening to Hillary Clinton. And then the more evidence was, was uh, you know, Bernie Sanders putting, you know, 20,000, 30,000 people in a stadium of, you know, people rallying behind his message of income and wealth inequality and, and fixing that problem, getting money out of politics, term limits, universal single-payer health care, minimum wage, you know, weed out the corruption. Now, again, I'm not a fan of Bernie Sanders anymore because Bernie Sanders right now is on, he just released a video a few days ago about um, how how social media needs to be monitored for, for uh that Google and, uh, and Amazon and, and, and uh, blah, 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 they have so much power, Facebook power. I, right? Bernie, shut the hell up. I, right? Bernie, this is this is the, the the new media. This is this is the truth coming out. So shut up. Right? You don't know what you're talking about anymore. You old fuck. <laughs> right, right? But he's he Bernie's got Bernie's not the leader. Bernie's the message. Bernie had had the message and. I certainly wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for for that guy, right? Sanders is a Sanders is a hero in many respects, but now his his um, his functionality has has exhausted. So I want to end on um, one one other thing that Brandon said because I see I don't think guys like see I don't think guys like John Brandon are are evil people, but they're they're caught in a really evil system where his boss Obama says. You're going to do this, and I don't care about the evidence. It's political correctness. This is what I want you to do. That's the definition of authoritarianism and totalitarianism, right? right? That's why we were so against this new world order, because they had Obama by the testicles, right? Creating a, uh, you know, an authoritarian nation so that the nation would just forget about the evidence. And, and uh, it's 1984. You know, it's Jones's farm. I've been saying it all along, right? So when, when, when Brannon was on his way out as a retirement statement, he said, and I quote from WikiLeaks, Since leaving office, Brannon has been harshly critical of Trump. In March 2018, Brannon said Trump had paranoia, caused him, accused him of consistent misrepresentation of the facts, and called him a charlatan. Following the firing of senior FBI official Andrew McCabe later that month, Brandon tweeted to Trump, when the full extent of your venality, <laughs> this is startling, right? When the full extent of your venality, moral turpitude, 
It's using all the big words. And political corruption becomes known. You will take your rightful place as a disgraced demagogue in the dustbin of history. You can scapegoat Andy McCabe, but will not destroy America. America will triumph over you. First of all, when the full extent of your venality, he's calling, he's saying that Trump is the charlatan, that Trump is the guy open to bribery, not him, right? The whole, the whole political system is all about bribery. It's all about how the money flows in. We saw it, you know, I'm not going to read, read, we talk about that, but the, how the money flows into politics. And he's turning around saying, when the full extent of your willingness to take bribes. In other words, he doesn't, he's not doing evidence again, right? There's no evidence of Trump doing that. He's just making an assumption that Trump is because he's a businessman and because he beat their candidate and because he's now in a power position to expose the corruption, what Trump said, drain the swamp. He's not going to do that, right? But he's in a position to do it, Trump. And then Brennan goes on to defend Andrew McCabe, who we just saw, a true pundit put it out, that they found real estate evidence, actual evidence, that Andrew McCabe lived next door, was neighbors. Him and his wife were neighbors with Hillary Clinton in Chappaqua, New York. So they were buddies, right? For 10 years, they were neighbors. They were in bed with each other, right? And so when it came time for, for the FBI guy, Andrew McCabe, to investigate Hillary Clinton, you think he's going to actually do a, a true investigation and look at the evidence no, because they don't do evidence anymore. It's all it's all politics. So this this notion that everybody's going to keep holding their breath for Hillary Clinton to get carted off to jail. There's no evidence that that's going to happen, right? because they don't they don't look at the facts, right? The facts don't matter anymore. That's the constitutional crisis in our country. All right, so that's some pretty heavy stuff, man. Some food for thought on a. Uh, on a Saturday morning. My name is Marcus Conti. I am a investigative journalist, a columnist, a YouTube blogger. Uh, I'm going to be here for a while, so uh, better get better get busy. Better get busy. Peace out. Peace out.